Oh, hey there. Guess what we're going to be doing today? We're going to be installing an 8S JBD BMS on some lithium iron phosphate cells. So if you want to learn how to do that, stick around. What's going on everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today's video, we're going to be installing an 8S JBD BMS on some lithium iron phosphate cells. Technically, you could use this video to install any BMS, but in today's video, it's just JBD. These are also the ones that overkill solar cells for $119 to $141, or you can get them off of eBay for like 60 to, I don't know, 70 bucks. Or if you have time to waste, you can get it from Alibaba or AliExpress for like 40 or 50 bucks, depending on which amperage you get. In today's video, it's it's an 8S JBD. It also comes with the Bluetooth, I don't know, whatever you want to call this thing. And it's got two temperature sensors. Now I know this video has probably been done a million times. I have not made one yet. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to try to make it quick, down and dirty, not to waste any of your time. So let's get to it. All right, so most of the items that you're going to need to complete the BMS installation, you're going to need some ring terminals. These I got off of Amazon. If you need something like this, I'll put a link down below. Really, it's just finding the correct size of ring terminal that you need that will fit on the top of your battery terminals up here, your battery posts. All right, so you're gonna need nine of whatever size you're using. All of these are gonna go on your balance leads. And then you're gonna need some battery lugs, which are gonna attach to the BMS. You're gonna need some wire crimpers or strippers. You could use these, some other wire strippers or these wire strippers, doesn't really matter. If you don't have something like this to crimp your terminals, you could always use a vise or a hammer. And of course, a wrench for the nuts on top of the battery. The ring terminals I'm gonna be using are the red or pink 18 to 22 AWG 5 16th ring terminals because those fit perfectly on the 5 16th stud on the battery. The battery that we're gonna be installing the BMS on is a battery that I just did a review on not too long ago. These are Orient Power Cell. These are 100 amp hour or 320 watt hours. Um, these are actually really nice cells. You can pull one C out of these no problem and I actually got hundred and seven amp hours out of these cells so they're pretty badass uh, it's pretty much a DIY battery uh, really cool case this is the battery that we're gonna be installing the BMS on today probably a few different places you could install the BMS right on the side or on the top which I'm probably gonna be doing it on the top all right so step one is gonna be trimming back all the insulation on all the wires and you really only need to do like a quarter of an inch all right just kidding. Don't do that unless you absolutely have to. So I'm going to be using these strippers right here. Find your quarter inch mark and you're pretty much it. Boom. Quarter of an inch. So go ahead and do that for the rest of the wires. All right. Step two is putting all your ring terminals on the wires. All right. So we got that quarter inch there and that's going to go right into the spot right there where you're going to crimp it. And these are the heat shrink style. All right. Use your crimpers. I think these ones kind of suck. So don't use these. You know, give it a little tug. Yeah, that didn't even crush it at all. These are like the only crimpers I have for these tiny things. So I am going to be using a vise for this. So if you don't have a good enough set of crimpers, use a vise or a hammer. All right, so if you don't have crimpers or if your crimpers are garbage just like mine and you need to use a vise, uh, just a little word of caution is you don't have to completely crush it because if you do, you end up just cutting the wires right here. So just, just keep that in mind whenever you do this. So go ahead and drop your wire down inside. Give it a little smashy smash. All right, not too much. Back it off. All right, and then once you're done, go ahead and give it a nice little tug to make sure it doesn't come out and you're good to go. And since these are the heat shrink style, I'm gonna go ahead and hit them with a the heat gun real quick off camera just so I don't waste any of your time. Boom and done. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is install all the balance wires on the battery. So you can see I've got a bunch of the terminal nuts already removed, and those are gonna be the places where we attach all the wires. So we're gonna start with the connector right here, and we have nine wires. The first wire we're gonna start with is the black wire, and that's the most negative of the battery. So you have your negative here, and your positive right over here. So we're gonna take that black wire right here and go to the battery negative. And also keep in mind when you're doing all this 
is wire management because we don't want a big spaghetti mess of wires. All right, so I'm just gonna attach the nut on here and I'm gonna leave it loose because we still have to attach the BMS to this terminal. All right, so now what we're gonna do is grab the very next wire next to the black wire and that's gonna go over to the first battery positive. And we'll go ahead and put the nut on there. Now we're gonna grab the third wire and we're gonna go to the very next battery positive. All right, that one's on there, and guess what? We're gonna take the very next wire in line and go to the very next battery positive right over here. And I'm leaving all the nuts loose just in case we have to adjust the wires, uh, the angle, etc. Back on our connector here, we're grabbing the very next wire here, and we're going to the next battery positive. All right, next wire in line, you guessed it, is going to the very next battery positive. And once again, the very next wire is going to the next battery positive. And we have two wires left. So the very next wire to the next battery positive. Alrighty, we are down to the very last wire, which is the battery positive. And again, that's just gonna sit on here loosely because we still have to attach our battery cable positive to it. All right, next thing we're gonna do is figure out the cable management of all of this. Basically what's gonna happen is I'm going to loop everything around on one side so I can come out and then loop around into the BMS. So give me just a minute, I'll put it in time-lapse mode and we'll get this wire management done. <laughs> Alrighty, there you go, nice and neat, nothing too fancy or crazy or anything like that. Next thing we're gonna do is make sure we tighten down all the nuts to all the terminals on the batteries. And I did leave the main positive and negative loose so we can hook up the BMS. And there's one other thing I'm gonna do for my battery since the case is metal here, these wires could potentially rub on that and rub through the wires and short it out. So I'm gonna wrap the wires here with Kapton tape. If you don't have Kapton tape, you can use really any kind of tape you want. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is verify everything is hooked up correctly. And then we're gonna do that by checking the voltages on all these little pins right over here. And I'm gonna rotate the battery around so it's easier for me to do this on camera. And how we do that is put the negative probe on the negative wire here and then check the voltages on each pin all the way up. And it should go up in roughly increments of three volts. So here we go. Cell number one, 3.4 volts. And be careful with this first one too because your probes are right next to each other and you could technically short it out. All right, anyway, next one, we're at seven volts, so that's good. Next one, 10 volts, so that's good. Next one, 14 volts, so we're good. Next one, 17 volts. Next one, 21 volts. Next one, 24 volts. And the last one, 27 volts. All right, so all of that is wired correctly. Alrighty, well, I just noticed I didn't actually hit the record button whenever I installed this one. So I'll make sure to get the other side on camera. So uh, what I did basically was I cut off these ends right here because these have solder on them and they don't like to fit inside the lug. So I just kind of trimmed off those little ends. All right, that's pretty much all I trimmed off was the soldered ends, okay? If yours has it, you know, you can trim it off or leave it on there, depending on how you're putting your terminals on. Obviously, the next step is to trim back enough insulation so you can shove both wires in there, and that's about, I don't know, a half inch or so. This wire on here is the silicone wire, so it's real easy to cut, so don't have to push too hard. All right, so here's the point where you can do two terminals or one. I'm gonna be doing one. Like I said before, I don't have the correct crimp tool to do something like that, so I'm going to smash it in a vise, and then I'm gonna hit it with a hammer and a punch. Wires inside, nice and even, and then smash it. Give it a nice smash. All right, there you go, all smash, and it's probably good enough, but I'm gonna take it one more step. All right, and I bring it to the back of the vise, and what I'm gonna be doing is putting a punch mark right here and right here, and what that kind of does is crimp the wire so you can't pull it back out. And I'm also gonna do the same right over here as well. And then I'll flip it over and do the same thing. Here we go. All right, one punch there, one punch there, one punch there, one punch there. And then we flip it over and do the exact same thing. Alrighty, there you go. You can see my little punch marks where the wires go through the terminal. 
and I have it on both sides. Now that wire is not coming out at all. We can even do the pull test. Not moving out at all. Strong as can be. All right, obviously the next thing we're gonna do is put some heat shrink on there to cover that terminal up. This is the marine grade, so it has the glue on the inside. All right, the next step, at least for my particular battery, since it has a cover on here, I have to install the BMS negative and my battery positive wire. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We'll go ahead and remove the nut, remove the balance lead, install the BMS battery negative or the blue wire, and then your balance wire, and then your nut. And we're gonna go ahead and tighten that down. And then for mine, I'm gonna go ahead and install these Anderson connectors. It's got ring lugs right on the other side. Remove the battery positive nut, remove the balance wire, install your battery cable positive, install the balance lead, and then tighten down the nut. And if you want, you can go through and make sure all the nuts are tight, which I'll do. All right, so this one came with two temperature probes, and what I'm gonna do is try to get one as close to the battery studs as I can, kind of right in the middle. So I'm just gonna kind of zip tie it right in place over here. Alrighty, so we have the temperature probe here right in the middle. Now for my particular battery, I do have a cover on here, so I'm gonna put that on. All right, so cover is installed. The next thing you could technically do right now is put some double-sided tape or whatever you're gonna to use to attach your BMS uh, to wherever it goes. I'm not gonna do that for this video. We'll just assume that I did. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is attach this temperature probe on the side of the battery right over here. I'm just gonna use some capped on tape for that. If I had some of that fancy glue, I would totally use it, but I don't have any of that. And I'm just gonna go right here on the side of the cell. All right, we are at the point of connecting our balance wires to the BMS. Now, before you do that, you always have to make sure that your blue wires, your battery negative wires, are actually physically connected to the battery. Otherwise they say bad things can happen. So make sure you have your blue wires hooked up and then we can go ahead and plug in the connector and it only goes in one way. Now, keep in mind, once we do this, your BMS is now active. So you do have voltage down here on this terminal, okay? And we'll go ahead and check that right now. So if we check that, we're sitting at 28 0.06 volts. All right, so everything is working as it should. Alrighty, the very next step is connecting to Bluetooth, and there's two different ways to do that. So option one is if you're just gonna do some random monitoring, like checking the voltages or checking to see how many amp hours you have left in the battery, I would just download the regular Shaosheng app from the App Store, you know, install it on your phone, and then you're pretty much done. Most of the settings in there are kind of a one size fits all. I don't think that app will allow you to change any settings, but I could be wrong since I have a different app installed. Installed. The other Shaosheng app which I have installed is the one from overkillsolar.com. I would highly recommend that version because that one will allow you to change the settings inside the BMS. Most people don't do this, which everybody should be doing. What you need to do is get the specs from your manufacturer for your specific batteries that you bought. The reason I say that is because not all batteries are created equal. Some of them have different temperature ranges for charge and discharge, etc. So what I would do is get your battery manufacturer specs and plug those right into the BMS. That way you use the batteries as they are intended. Alrighty, so that's what we're going to do next. All right, so what we're going to do is open up the Shaosheng BMS app. This particular one is called the Ultimatron BMS. Yours may be the same, it could be different. Either way, go ahead and click on that. And the first time you connect to this, it's gonna ask for a password and it is six zeros. And then after that, it's gonna ask you how many amp hours your battery is. So go ahead and plug that in right now. Since I've already used this battery and BMS, mine has already been entered. All right, so in here across the top, on uh, the big circle, you're gonna have your amps for charge and discharge. Obviously we're not doing anything, so it doesn't show anything. Down below that, you have temperatures, your time left is an estimate, and then your total voltage of the pack, which is 28.1 volts. Right below that, you can see the amp hours remaining. This one is at 107 because that was the last discharge test I did on these particular batteries. Since yours is brand new, it might have a different number in there. And to the right of that, it's showing the range of your cells, 3.47 to 3.53. 
and your delta, which is your voltage difference, is 60 millivolts. So that's where that range comes in. And if you go below that, it shows the voltages of each cell. And we are balancing on one, three, five, and seven batteries right now. So that's kind of cool. Uh, anyway, this is all fine and dandy. You could probably use it as is, but if you want to make it a little more accurate and correct, get the battery specs from wherever you bought the batteries from, you can plug those right in here under parameter settings. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to click on parameter settings. And in here, you can plug in all the specs that are related to your battery. So obviously up top, we've got cell number, and this is an 8S. Your nominal capacity, technically this would be 100 amp hours since this is a 100 amp hour battery. But since I've already used this battery and this BMS, my last discharge test was 107.83 hours. And that number will change as you cycle the battery. Right below that, under the protection parameters, this is where you want to plug in all your battery specs that you got from the manufacturer. Typically, lithium iron phosphate cells, the overvoltage is set at 3.65 volts. So I'm going to leave that the same. If yours is different, go ahead and change that. And then the undervoltage is set for 2.5. 5 volts. Again, pretty typical for these type of cells. Some might actually be 2.7. And if we scroll down just a little bit further, if we go to pack voltage, this one is set for 30 volts. It's fine. If you wanted to get technical, you could change it to roughly, I don't know, 29.3 or something like that. But that one isn't too important because we already set our high and low cell cutoffs right above. And if we scroll down just a little bit further, pack under voltage is set for 20 volts. That's perfect. The charging temperature is pretty important. So for these particular cells, under the charging temperature, these go up to 45C. So I'm going to go ahead and change that to 45C. And then for the overcharging temperature release, I'm just going to set that one to 40C, just five degrees below that. If we scroll down just a little bit more, the charging under temperature, this one is set to minus 1C. These particular batteries call for 0C. So I'm going to change that. And then for the release, I'm just going to change it to 1. Discharge over temperature, these particular cells are set for 60. So I'm going to change that. And then the release, I'm just going to go to, I don't know, 55. And if we go down just a little bit further, discharge under temperature, I thought I set that to zero. And then this one, I'm going to go to one. All right, so this one is already programmed for the overcurrent, which is 110 amps, that's fine. Uh, you have to do that for 32 seconds, and then it'll shut off. Same for the discharge, 110 amps for 32 seconds, then it will shut off. That's fine, and it does work, I've done it before. Uh, balance turn on voltage. Uh, this one's set at 3.4 volts. That's fine for me. Next one down is balancing precision. This is how closely your cells are going to stay in balance on the top end or how close you want them to be. Originally, this was set up as 0 0.010 and I just changed it to 0 0.001. Basically, you want to be under 10 millivolts. And most of this other stuff down here, um, you can just leave the same. All right. Especially all these numbers down here. All right, so all of that is set to the battery manufacturer's specs. And we're going to back out one page and then click on the three lines again and then go to function setting. And basically you want to match this right here. So load check is fine. We want to enable the balance. And for the charge balance, we want that off because we want it to start balancing whenever it reaches that 3.4 volts. All right, so that is pretty much it. We are ready to roll. Boom, and you're done. All right, so you are pretty much ready to go. Only thing you really need to do now is connect a fuse to your battery wires and then connect it to your inverter or really whatever you're gonna be connecting it to and you're ready to go. All right, that's pretty much the end of this video as I've wasted probably enough of your time. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you put those down in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button, and I will see you on the next one. Uh, um, 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 I, in the comment section, is that too loud?